Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm Richard Fields. On the program today, we have Scott Schmidt, and he is uh, a Republican running for California Assembly District 7. Also, Eric Frame, who is uh, an independent running for California Senate uh, District 6. Uh, overlapping districts, both uh, Sacramento and, and, uh, and the north of Sacramento. So, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, tell me a little bit uh, about why you're running uh, for, against uh, Senator Richard Pan. Eric? Uh, the reason I'm running is that there are just way too many issues that we face right now in California and in the nation. We have homelessness increasing, including recently more, more and more elderly folk being pushed out onto the streets. We have been called a hub of human trafficking, Sacramento has, including child trafficking. I believe one child trafficked, one human trafficked is too many. We have a healthcare system that's the most costly and also the most deadly. My mother went through chemotherapy and cancer and she passed away in 2015. I wish she was offered alternatives to chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery. Right now in California, those are the only three treatments that are legal in California. Chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery to treat cancer. I believe we should be able to allow other alternatives in and allow doctors to choose from different alternative medicines, natural remedies as well. Uh, my opponent has actively stifled laws that would allow for those um, alternative and natural remedies to be offered to people. Um, it was not fun for me to watch my mother suffer through chemotherapy and she's the main reason why I'm running for office, but I'm also seeing way too many people suffering on the streets for various issues. And uh, it all ties into corruption and I think we need to replace some corrupt, clearly corrupt representatives with um, some new blood. So that's why I'm running for office in Senate District 6, Sacramento area. Would you be uh, willing to take a statement so strong as to say that Dr. Richard Pan is protecting the medical establishment's monopoly over the practice of medicine? Absolutely, absolutely. And frankly, he's breaking his Hippocratic Oath in various ways. Um, but I would go into his stance against a healthcare for all system uh, which would provide health care for Okay, everyone. health care for all. Tell me, uh, tell me what that means, because when I hear health care for all, the first question that comes up is at whose expense? We all want health care for all, right. but how do you pay for health care for all? Yeah. Privately? Through the government? How? Well, frankly, right now we have the most expensive health care system in the world. We have a totally messed up health care system. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's clearly it's a status quo system that needs to be changed to some degree. I think we can all agree on that. Not just because of its cost, but its deadliness. But how do you, um, how do you make a health care for all system? Well, uh, you would throw in, you know, a, a, a flat tax, a, a tax that oh, would... Oh, a tax. Right, right. Okay, but so if you, you, you want to fund health care with a tax. Well, frankly, first and foremost, I want a health care system that's not deadly, a system that includes natural remedies. Okay, we remedies. agree on that. Absolutely. And, and, you know, natural remedies, right. uh, uh, cannabis uh, mm -hmm. remedies, you name it, anything that you, any, any, any treatment that you want. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there are laws against uh, drugs being used, experimental drugs being used, just in fact, it just got recently got changed. Uh, experimental drugs couldn't be used by by a uh, a, a patient who was uh, who was going to die anyway. Mm -hmm. They did not have the right to try an experimental drug. That that law got changed, so now they can under certain circumstances. But the you know opening up the choice of medical treatment to the patient, primarily the patient, but also the patient with the advice of the doctor. Mm -hmm. I think that may, you know totally agree with that. Right. Well, we, but you still got to pay for that right, treatment. Right, exactly. And w what we're paying right now is thousands of people going bankrupt every year, going uh, right. homeless. Why do you suppose that is? Because it's so darn expensive. I know it's expensive. What is it that makes it expensive? Would it be the fact that in California and all across the rest of the country, you have to have a license to, get a ho to build a hospital? And in order to get that license, you have to get every other hospital in the, in the county to agree to you getting a license? For a, new, you know, for a new competitor to come in? Would that be part of it? Absolutely. Limiting competition? Yeah. Also, Would it be that Richard Pan and the American Medical Association have licenses which they make extremely difficult, not to mention extremely expensive for anybody else to yeah. come in and compete And all these them? issues we've talked about are interconnected and you see the Would same be, thing with affordable housing. Would it be that, that uh, the, our whole pharmaceutical industry is set up in such a way that it is extremely expensive to uh, put in the competing medicine? 
Yeah, yeah, okay. and it's on purpose, of course. Well, well yeah, okay. So I'm, 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 what I'm doing here is getting at, at causes of the high expense as opposed to trying to pay the high expense through taxation. Right. Okay. If I could add in too, I think a bigger issue too is just like government's corrupt as well. There is bribery. There, there is a uh, uh, companies that pay off certain providers for certain drugs. I mean, it, it's kind of like um, doctors have pushed a certain type of medicine and they, they get some kind of benefit from it. I mean, there's a lot of that going on. You go to a hospital, you're paying $15, $15 for one aspirin. Yeah. One, one bottle of aspirin is what? Like well, and that brings, $1? In, that brings in the whole idea of third party payment. And when you talk about insurance for all, that usually involves a third party payment, meaning government. Right now, we have a third party uh, a payer, which is private insurance companies. Sure. <coughs> I'm an old guy. When I was growing up, insurance for med med medical uh, treatment was major medical only. At that time, it was like $10,000 deductible, which would probably translate into $100,000 deductible today. For that, for, for, with a policy like that, whenever you have you know, a relatively minor illness, whether you have a, you know, the, a cold or the flu or a broken arm, uh, or, you know, whatever, you just go to the doctor, pay cash, walk away. I had, a, I had you know, multiple, two, two broken arms when I was a kid. Go into the doctor, the doctor's office had a doctor and a nurse bookkeeper. One person on staff, the doctor and one person on staff. Now you go into a doctor's office and it's a doctor and half a dozen or a dozen people on staff doing nothing but pushing insurance paperwork. That's all they do. That's, why, that's one of the reasons why medical care is, is so high. Why are, are all these pushy people pushing uh, doing, doing insurance paperwork? It's because they have to, it, it's first dollar coverage. They have to figure out whether they have to process paperwork for paying for my broken arm, which you know is maybe a hundred or two hundred dollar thing, but by the time they push all the paper, it's going to be a thousand or more. I'm just pulling numbers out of my head, but it's you know an order of magnitude more expensive when you get insurance companies in there doing the doing the middlemen. Yeah, as middlemen. Yeah. Now I'm not advocating for Medicare Medicare for all, but I think there is there needs to be a, a real change because people aren't satis satisfied with the current system there is now. So we need to do something about it, whether it be um, changing the laws and getting rid of regulations to you know, do less paperwork, whatever, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a expert on the subject, but there needs to be a real change. Well, I mean, Medicare for all, I, when I hear that, I think, wait a minute, Medicare is going broke, and it's just for old people, and it's, and it's being paid for by old people as well as yeah. young people. Mm -hmm. True. So if the entire population is paying for Medicare, and only old people are, are getting it, and it's already going broke, Medicare for all is going to go really broke really fast, mm -hmm. right? Well, the solution I think that is there is to push and inform people of alternative and natural remedies that are being ignored completely. And make them I, legal. And make them legal and, and, and educate people about their effectiveness and they're more, they're, how they're more effective than a lot of big pharma drugs that treat symptoms and don't go after root causes anyway. Here's an issue that you guys are going to be probably involved in one way or another. That's the proposal to split California into three. Uh, it got on the ballot, and now the Supreme Court of California has ruled that it can't go on the ballot because <laughs> it requires, yes. they think it requires a two-thirds vote of the legislature in order to get it on the ballot. You'll probably be asked to vote uh, on, the, on that issue. But when I look at that, I say, okay, yeah, there's some problems in, you know, in Tahama County or, you know, far northern California not getting very well sure. represented. But the three Californias they're talking about are essentially San Francisco in the Bay Area, mm -hmm. Los Angeles, and San Diego. Correct. So if you are in the California that includes San Francisco, you happen to live up in Eureka, you're still not going to get very much representation. Likewise, if you're in Fresno, and that's the, uh, the, part, you know, the uh, district that's represented by San Diego, you're not going to get a whole hell of a lot of representation of your interests. Same way with, with, with LA if you happen to live in Monterey. So what I'm wondering about is this proposal worth anything in the first place? And the second thing is, is there a snowball's chance in hell of Congress, the Senate, voting for six California senators as opposed to two? Because that's what would be required to make it, to make it uh, possible at the national level. I think it's just a publicity stunt to, for the billionaire, I think it's Tim Draper, yeah. that's when he created it. I think it's just for him to uh, show his muscle and say, hey, I put this on the ballot. I, I, I think it's just kind of a joke, to be totally honest. And he, so you're not, you're not a State of Jefferson fan? Uh, I, I understand people wanting independence, 
from the union mm -hmm. or, or having their own state. That's that's cool and all. But the thing is, uh, it's just unlikely to ever happen. The federal government never allowed it to happen. The state of California never, never let it happen. So it's a, a moot point, I think. Well, California has the worst proportion of representation to actual people. It's uh, by far worse than any other state. For, for example, how many constituents would you represent? Right, I'd represent one million constituents. And you, do you, uh, are you going door to door to talk to all one million con constituents? I'm going door to door, <laughs> but I don't He's think crying. I'm going to hit one million. Yeah. Uh, what percentage, realistically, can you hit in a door-to-door -door campaign? One percentage per of one million? Uh, one percent, yeah. Maybe. One percent, maybe yeah. two if I'm lucky. And you can, you can maybe do double that because your district is half as big. Yeah, it's true. But still, 500,000 people, right? Yeah. Roughly. And I think this initiative would actually be an eye-opener to a lot of people all over the nation to actually show how, how Californians are feeling unrepresented right now. Uh, if we decided to split up the state three ways, we would, you know, crack down on that horrible ratio of representation. The, the key is who, who do we end up getting as a representation at that point? It would have to be the right people, of course. Okay. Uh, the right people is always what a politician will say. I am the right person. My, my opponent is not the right person. Elect me and things will change. <clears throat> but I've been watching politics for so long that I have come to believe that it's not so much the person who is in a political office as in the inordinate amount of power the politicians have. Power to do corrupt things like you guys have been talking about. And that power doesn't go away. Correct. That's true, but we, we need to have a little faith in our younger generation here's, who are we, sticking we, our we, heads we on the line add, and though, getting our, our that, names that, out there. That him and I are going to be the Molotov cocktail to the real system that's corrupt. We want to change it all for the re to represent everyone collectively rather than the special interests that are really paying off these people to do whatever they want. It, it's a pay for play. I mean, they're paying you these contributions daily, and if you don't do what they want you to do, they'll give you less contributions later. So we have a real issue with that. And to that point, I'm, I'm a candidate that's funded strictly from the community, from supporters and friends and family. I don't have any business money coming in or corporate money coming in either. So when I'm put in office, Lord knows there's going to be pressure put on me from all sorts of entities. But when in, it's just community funding that I have to fall back on and those people who I represent. Do you guys take uh, uh, inspiration from, I think, what's her name, Ortiz, that won a, a district, a Senate district, or a, a House district in, in New York City, in the Bronx? The, the progressive Democrat? I yeah. mean, sh she is against establishment, and we both support that. We, we need to change it for the better. However, I mean, some of her policies, I don't know, I mean, even though they might be uh, nice things to say or, or nice ideas, I don't know whether or not they're going to be effective or efficient. I mean, she has some pretty progressive beliefs, and... I mean, they're, you know, good things to think about and hope they would work out, but we just don't know if they're possible. I've also never met her in person, so I'm not exactly sure who she is. I hope it's not some sort of, you know, incrementalist crumb that we're given from a Democratic Party. You know, we've, we've seen this before where we have one progressive actually make it, and then they're kind of alone, and then people join the Democratic Party because we've finally got one progressive in. Um, so I'd have to meet her in person, and I do support a lot of what she says, and it is very hopeful to see a young person, you know, crack it and make it into. Well, it says something about the, the, uh, the satisfaction with the establishment uh, among Democrats in the Bronx who are turning out a 20-term uh, or 20-year 20, 20 uh, veteran, somebody who presumably in the, you know, go along to get along and, you know, bring back the bacon kind of a standpoint would probably be, be good for that particular district. So, I mean, people are, are, are fed up with politics as usual. Uh, and, that's and, and clear. Even, and even solid democratic districts, which you guys are both running in. Mm -hmm. um, banning straws, makes sense? <laughs> I, I think it's an issue that's just a distraction issue, honestly. We've got so much corruption, child trafficking, human trafficking, homelessness growing. I don't really like debating these issues. And I, I like how the, uh, the young man saw the fact that we weren't using the straws, and I liked his idea to have restaurants offer a straw instead of just throwing them out there. I think, let's stick with that. We don't have to regulate anything. Just stick with having restaurants offer it because it's more cost effective. I mean, in a perfect environment, we don't want to have any plastic that gets into the water or harms any of the wildlife, but 
I mean, we're living day to day at this point. I mean, for some people, that straw might be what they need to drink their drink, whatever. I mean, it depends on whether or not they even, I don't know. It's, it, like you said, it's, it's a distraction. It, okay. It's just kind of. You, can, you, can, you, you bring up human trafficking a, a lot. And we all agree, I, or most of us would agree, that the human, tra well, except for some politicians, I guess, <laughs> would agree that human trafficking, when it involves minors, is horrendous. And, but when it involves people who are of, you know, certain, you know have reached uh, adulthood, women or men who have reached adulthood and who freely decide they want to go into that particular business. It should prostitution be legalized? Would that not stop in its tracks human trafficking because it would no longer be illegal? It would no longer require pimps and, uh, and, uh, and uh, human traffickers in order to do business? Well, we can't just overlook the child trafficking, first of all. I want uh, to no, scream from the rooftop. Separate, separate, separate issue. I know, I know. But, um, I'm talking about adults now. Right, absolutely. I am actually for the repeal. I, I can't remember the, the acts right now, but there are certain acts that actually made human trafficking worse by having sex workers um, have a harder time reaching clients without having to go through Yeah, it just passed. Yeah, yeah. FOSTA, I think. Yeah, it, yeah. so I'm against those acts because it's actually harmful for those sex workers. Right. And it's uh, increasing human trafficking. Um, now, I just think trafficking of children and, and human trafficking should be something we should all be able to unite the around. Human trafficking of children is slavery. Right, absolutely. That's all it is. Yeah. And we're, we're all against slavery, whether it's adult or, or children. So why aren't we on the steps of the Capitol and every day? But when it comes to adults who freely enter into it, it's making prostitution, making uh, sex work legal, would end the need for slavery well, because it would make it possible to do it in the open. Well, it's not true. I think we should we can still decriminalize it. You don't have to legalize it because when you legalize it, same difference. It's not the same difference. When you legalize it, that means you allow the government to tax whatever that person well, does. Well, if you want to be cynical, decriminalization would make it possible to ply your trade and not pay taxes, I guess. Well, or, or just not endorse the whole, you know, work. Well, it, you're not endorsing something by saying you can. You, you're free to do it. What you're doing is you're saying you're an adult. You can do what you want. Sure. I will do what I want. I'm not going to take part of your. I'm not going to partake in your in your service. But if you want to do that, that's that's your business. But at the same time, you you are endorsing and saying the government. You know, you're, you you're can take your money if you decide to do this. And you know, apply for these licenses to have a uh, you know a place where you got to do at or whatever uh, else. You don't have to. Yeah. Moving on, <laughs> uh, Sarah uh, Sacha Baron Cohen made a big. Uh, uh, Stir, I think it's on HMO or one of the uh, one of the TV uh, pay TV channels. Put together a series of uh, uh, anti Second Amendment. I guess would be the best way to put it. Uh, 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 what do you call them? Uh, 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 ambush videos, essentially. Okay. He, what he did is he would get somebody from the NRA or from the gun rights gun owners and get them into a you know gain their confidence and get them to agree that in the most uh, you know the most uh, uh, humorous one, get them to agree that toddlers sh should have the right to have guns. Uh, and obviously, nobody in their right mind would support that, right? Hopefully. But let me ask, where do you stand on the Second Amendment for adults? And where do you stand on the Second Amendment, the right to keep and bear arms for adults? Well, for, for adults, I think we all should be allowed the ability to have and bear arms. Uh, however, at the same time, I mean, when you're 18 years old, you can't drink alcohol. You can't even smoke cigarettes in California. Well, so should you be able to? You should. Okay. But you can't by, okay. by law. I know. So I, I would advocate, if that's the case, then you're totally not an adult at 18 years old. Okay, well, we're arguing about the age then. Yeah. At the Whether age. it should be 21, should it be 18, Correct. should it be 16, should it be 14, should it be 30? Yeah. So what we're talking about is the age of majority. Correct. That's, that's where the argument comes down, right? Absolutely, and I'm, I'm for the Second Amendment right to bear arms completely, 100%. At what age? What, what do you, think, what do you guys think the age of the majority should be? 18, correct? Yeah, correct. I, I would say if you can't drink alcohol, you can't smoke cigarettes, make it 21 across the board because I want consi consistency. Okay, well, consistency is fine. And, but you, so, so you're arguing for a consistent age of 21. So, so, so it means you cannot vote at 18, but you can vote at 21. Make it <laughs> down the line. <laughs> Okay. And you can't and you can't have people be drafted either. Okay. Well, not. 
I, I, I was I'm, I'm not draft. saying you as a person, yeah, but I'm but, saying in yeah. general. Well, no, I mean, I, I had to look at the draft. You guys, you guys have skated so far. It doesn't mean it can't happen tomorrow, though. Oh, absolutely. Anything's possible. Absolutely, especially with all of the uh, talk about, uh, well, let's talk about, this is, again, not a state issue. This is more of a, of a federal issue, but it certainly could affect people in California if, uh, if uh, it heats up. I'm talking about the, uh, the Trump-Putin sum summits. And I'll add to that the North Korean summits. Are those steps in the right direction, more peace? Are they steps in the wrong direction, aiding and abetting the enemy? Is it just a circus sideshow? La the latter. The, it's a circus sideshow, in my opinion. I think it's, it's, a, it's more of a show to continue to divide us, not just the people of the United States who are divided over, you know, Russia Gate and all that mumbo jumbo, but also trying to divide us on a you know worldly level to you know bash Russia or bash any other state, for instance. I just think presidents on a whole have had a lot of strings attached to them, and frankly, I don't pay too much attention to the national picture right now, specifically because I'm running on the state level, and I think it is a distraction and it's something that divides us every day. I'd also like to add that, I mean, diplomacy, whether it be a uh, cruel dictator or a democ democratic, you know, um, great guy, it doesn't make a difference. We want to be able to be nice to our neighbors, everyone, everyone within the world, because when it comes down to it, without diplomacy, there's war, and there's issues, there's trade wars, there's uh, fighting, infighting. I, I just want to have people come together, and maybe if we all come together as a community, we can all help each other out. One of the uh, ways of looking at it from a libertarian standpoint is, in our families, we're all socialists in a sense. We're, you know, we're all, we all, we don't, we don't steal from each other, right? In, well, in, a, in a family well, setting. Well, if you have siblings, I'm sure you do. It's not, it's not, <laughs> not, not for very long. You don't. In a, in a family setting, we don't steal from each other. We don't beat each other up. Okay. Okay. And pretty much that's true in a business setting. You know, you don't keep customers very long if you steal from them or if you, or if you beat them up. You know, you don't aggress mm -hmm. against your customers. So in the business world, we're pretty, you know, pretty peaceful, pretty, uh, pretty honest. But when it comes to politics, we're more than willing to hire a politician to steal from Peter to pay Paul. Right? That's true, yes. Why is it one step removed okay? Uh, because you can get away with it, that's why. Okay, as a politician, and somebody who will be in that position, will you, f uh, will you take a, a pledge not to rob from Peter to pay Paul? Absolutely, yeah, I could take that pledge right now. Likewise. Okay, glad to hear that. We have five minutes left. I'm, I, I'd like you guys to make the best pitch that you can for why you should w win against McCarty and why you should win against Pam. You wanna okay. go first? Sure, absolutely. So we have a system that's completely backwards right now. We have homelessness increasing in Sacramento. This is including elderly folk being pushed down on the streets. Everything is run by big money right now. And um, I'm a community-funded candidate. I get my funds from friends, family, supporters, people all over the nation, actually, that are very angry with our status quo system. And uh, my opponent, my incumbent opponent, has more hatred coming his way than many other opponents, or many other incumbents in, in this nation from both sides of the aisle. I'm just a guy that has worked my tail off. I have a small business. I, I've worked the, in the gig economy. I'm trying to pay rent and run for office at the same time. And the issues we face are just too numerous and too great to not run for office. Child trafficking. We should all be on the steps of the Capitol voicing our opinion that child trafficking is no good, it must be stopped, and the root cause of all these issues is corruption. We need new blood in office, we need people in office that are regular Joes. I'm born and raised in Sacramento, my opponent moved in here just to run for office. Love is the answer, it's gonna be people power that actually changes this world, but we need to work our tails off to get in office and be voices for, for real change and to unite. We need to unite, desperately. Please vote for me. Uh, Eric Frame, running for State Senate District 6, the Sacramento area. Think big picture. We need new blood in office. Thank you. And I want to join in with uh, 
era can say that we do need new blood. We also need to get rid of the corruption that's involved in, in our politics, get rid of the special interests if we can, bring back affordable housing, be able to get rid of the homelessness crisis. And I also want to add that I'd appreciate your vote, your ability to think about me and my run. And Kevin, if you're watching this, I want to say that come November, I'm going to make you sweat and potentially your job is going to be mine. Thank you. Well, thank you guys very much. This has been the Libertarian Counterpoint. We've got about uh, three minutes left, so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invite you guys to uh, uh, go back and, and, and say more uh, about uh, what you think your opponents are specifically doing wrong. What is Richard Pan doing wrong? What is McCarty doing wrong? I got one for, I got many for Richard Pan, but one is a, a new bill he's put in place which is called the fact-checking bill. So with this bill, uh, the government would decide what's the truth, and the government would decide what's false. And they would have big uh, warning signs on any news item they deem to be false. So if that doesn't sound like big brother to you, even more so than, it already, than we already have, then uh, I would say vote for someone that's against that bill and running against that person that's pushing for government fact checkers that will tell us what the truth is. And it gets even worse, actually. McCarty was trying to ban uh, ta youth tackle football. He was trying to ban soda and tax soda on top. And it's just these policies we don't really need. We're adults. Our children are they're not our property, but they're under our um, supervision. And we should be able to have that control to tell them what they can and cannot do. If they want to have a soda, that's fine. But we shouldn't be having big government telling us what our children should be doing. So you're talking about personal autonomy for uh, the, the family unit? Correct. Absolutely, and that's something that ties in greatly with the candidate I'm running against as well. And I just would like to go into in a little bit more detail. You know, I said you know, we all start out as socialists because you know, from each according to their uh, ability, to each according to their need, socialists. Babies are all need, parents are all ability, and so, you know, do you agree with that, or do you think do you think that that works beyond the family unit? Well, yeah, I agree with that. And I, what socialism means to me is that people are the ones that are going to change this world, and we need. I wish we had more time to debate it. Thank you very much. That's the show. I'll see you again next week, same time, same place. Thank you.